going on pirates? Welcome back to another Sea of Thieves video. Today we're going to be looking into soloing the Ashen Skeleton Fort. Now I know some of you out there have done these forts literally hundreds of times and are thinking there isn't anything you can show me. But I assure you I have some really great tips you might not know. So be sure to stick around because we're starting right now. For those of you who might be new to the Sea of Thieves, the Ashen Skeleton Fort is a random event that happens in the world and is represented by a large red skull in the sky. Don't get the Ashen Fort mixed up with the Fort of the Damned, which is a white skull with red eyes. That's an entirely different type of fort that we'll cover in a later video. When you're ready to take on the Ashen Skeleton Fort, just sail your boat towards the cloud. As you approach, the music will change, signifying that the event has begun. For those of you who haven't done a lot of skull forts, the hardest part is safely getting your boat to the island without sinking from all the cannon fire. To make this a little easier, I put together a chart showing all of the forts and their cannon coverage. I also included a link in the description where you can download a high-res version. Generally though, your best course of action is to approach the island with full wind in your sails. Skeletons have a difficult time hitting fast-moving targets, and it gives you more maneuverability to avoid their shots. When you moor your boat, just try to put it in a place that has a lot of cannon coverage. And leave the anchor up. I'll explain more on that later. The Ashen Skeleton Fort consists of three separate sections. Section 1 requires you to defeat 12 waves of skeletons, and 10 skeletons per wave. The final wave will also include a captain, signified by a unique horn sound. The skeletons for each wave are randomly selected from one of the four main types found throughout the game. You will face bandana skeletons, plant skeletons, gold skeletons, and shadow skeletons. Bandana skeletons are the generic skeletons. They have no weaknesses, and they move at a standard speed. Plant skeletons are highly resistant to ranged weapons, so make sure you use your swords and turn them into a house cellar. They move faster during the day and slower at night. Additionally, they will regenerate their health if exposed to any water, and it sounds like fairy dust. Gold skeletons are highly resistant to swords, so be sure you use ranged weapons and powder kegs to kill them. They move very slowly, and if exposed to water, they will pretty much stop completely. While wet, they also become more vulnerable to ranged damage, so make sure you get your buckets out. Also, if you're curious, puke does nothing. Shadow skeletons are impervious to any damage at night. To damage them, you will need to shine your lantern on them or fight them during the day. They will also move quickly at night and slower during the day. Sadly, the fire bombs at night will not do any damage unless you use a lantern on them first. I find the easiest way to solo most ways is to get them to the top of the tower. This has a couple benefits. You can block the line of sight for any ranged skeleton while keeping them tightly grouped together as well as keep an eye on the horizon for any pirates that might be trying to steal your fort. After you have defeated all of the skeleton waves and captain, another horn will sound and you'll need to defeat an Ashen Guardian and a Key Master. Generally, these guys come with an entourage of ranged skeletons that will make quick work of you if you are in the open. Again, take them to the top of the fort where you can utilize cover or snipe them from the safety of your boat. Once defeated, the last horn will sound, and you'll have to battle one of three skeleton wars. The Mutinous Helmsman, the Two-Faced Scoundrel, or the Duchess. These skeleton lords have significant amounts of health, so I don't recommend trying to fight them toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They are able to wield swords, blunderbuss, and a pistol, depending upon your distance from them. Additionally, they have an AoE knockback attack, teleportation, and can summon additional skeletons to help them fight. Overall, these Skeleton Lords are very formidable. The best way to defeat them is to use your ship's cannons. It will take roughly 20 direct shots to kill them. When the Skeleton Lord is defeated, it will drop the Fort Key, which you can use to unlock the Treasure Vault. But before you do that, take the time to look around the island. Scan the horizon for any approaching ships. Also, look in the water for any mermaids or rowboats. Finding any of these is a sure sign you're not alone. If you do find someone on your island, you have a couple of options at this point. You can stash the key in a bush and do a thorough search, but that has a lot of inherent risk. You don't know how many pirates you're dealing with, or where they are. They, however, are acutely aware of where you are, and are ready for a fight. 
In this situation, you should take the key and leave the fort as fast as possible. You did leave your anchor up, right? By this point, most pirates will know the trap is blown and will come out of hiding in an attempt to stop you. Be extremely cautious, as there is a high likelihood one or more pirates will be tucked on your boat. If you manage to get away, you can stash the key on another island and return later with little risk you will lose your hard work. So what do you do if you spot an incoming ship while working on an active fort? Immediately, grab a powder keg, get into the water, and intercept the incoming ship. Most of the time, approaching ships will attempt to sink you with cannon fire, which is generally a bad idea. You, being prepared for this possibility, have already moored your ship in a location with a lot of cannon coverage, right? Once that ship gets in range of the fort, they're going to have to deal with significant cannon resistance. This generally causes enough distraction on any ship to allow you to board with your powder keg unnoticed, finishing the job. This technique is very, very effective. Now let's reverse the situation. You are a solo player approaching an occupied fort. What options do you have? As we just learned, an aggressive frontal assault will almost certainly get you killed and sunk. An alternative is to approach the fort at a distance where the cannons will have difficulty hitting your ship and swimmers will be unlikely. This will allow you to repeatedly cannon over to the island, boarding opposing ships, engaging in PvP, or utilizing powder kegs. Alternatively, a more stealthy route is to keep your ship out of sight and use a rowboat or swim. Most pirates don't do an island sweep after completing a fort, so you can take your time, plan your attack, and strike when the moment is opportune. So once everything is done, and you've completed the Ashen Skeleton Fort, what do you get? You'll get roughly 25,000 gold in treasure, two Ashen Chests and a key, and about six gifts. If you are looking to get to Pirate Legend, forts are fantastic as they will provide reputation for the three main trading companies. Oh, one last thing, as I'm sure someone will ask, what about the Molten Sands Fort in the Devil's Roar? Honestly, I don't think it's even worth doing. Volcanoes, boiling water, and fire make the difficulty significantly harder. When you combine that with extra time to get there and back, the reward just isn't worth the risk. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.